Hey, it's Neil from Heaviosity. I'm here to remind you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will not regret it. And it's easy. Grab your phone. Just click that button. Subscribe. Boom. Done. Then you get all the good news. Maybe even like a video. We would love you to do it. And you won't be sorry. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Neil from Heavy Austin, and I'm back here again with you for episode four of Two Hour Cues. Pretty excited about it. This week is going to be a heavy adventure action cue. It's going to be kind of furious. Lots of stuff going on. We've got strings, we've got brass, we've got epic percussion. We even have some live guitar. I actually played some guitar, believe it or not. Uh, synth stuff, and it's all going to culminate into this pretty explosive, fun track. And I hope you guys dig it. For those of you joining us for the first time for two hour cues, the basic show is about I write an idea in a couple hours, I'll sketch out the themes and the melodies. I will spend some time later doing things to make it sound better, adding more parts, augmenting, tweaking, explain like what I use for strings and brass and why, how those articulations might work together, the voices, the drums, you know, if there's a different time signature. It's really about talking about how to compose a piece in a specific style. Uh, how to execute that well, and how to do it somewhat quickly. That's the show in a nutshell, and welcome to episode four. Here we go. You get the idea, right? So before we get into the beginning of this, I have to do something important. <sighs> Thank you. All right, so let's go to the top of the piece. And there's so much to talk about. Where do we begin? I think we're going to start off with random pick. How about the percussion? So I'm in Cubase. You can use whatever DAW you're comfortable with. And I recently have been delving deeper into what makes Cubase tick. If we look at our mixer, I set up tracks I wanted to look at, in this case, drums. I've got a like a master, which they call a VCA. Not to get too crazy into it, it's a voltage-controlled amplifier in the days of mixing consoles, like over here. It essentially would just be like a master fader to move all faders at once. Uh, the way they were set up was, say, the this drum this loud, this drum this loud, hi-hats this loud, ratio would come down and move. It's similar to like groups or augs, but there's no audio passing through. So essentially, just kind of a vibe brewing. There seems to be some synth playing in that disregard all right so the intro is kind of like this vibey soup going on as it's brewing into its angry state of uh, aggression in the second section so you'll notice something too 
The time signature, what's up with that, dude? I see something that says 7-8. So that's what we're talking about. It gives it a, I don't know, this kind of different feel when something's in 7-8. If I put the, uh, the click in, you'll hear... Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a little free in here. And you're going to notice it here. Seven. Right, so as I was talking over it, the intro is in 7-8. It didn't necessarily have to be. I just started the track that way because it's really just a vibe thing going on, cymbals and washy stuff. Uh, it's when the drums kick in, and you really feel that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So that's interesting. Why did I do that? I don't know. Uh, it felt good basically seven eight seven eight seven eight bars 12 13 and 14 and then there's a four four answer so let me play that so there's kind of like this answer at bar 15 which is duka 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 ba and then it goes back into the seven eight thing feels a little like lopsided and it pushes you forward. At least that's the vibe that I get from doing it. There are some cymbals. They might be a little loud, so let's take those out. We've got um, some Master Sessions drums. I was trying to find some stuff that I hadn't used all that frequently, and um, I was kind of happy to discover this, you know, drum mix with some Tycos in it. Just super dry. One, two, three, four. If we listen to the woods soloed, similar, it's the same pattern, just a different flavor of drums. So if we hear those two together, master session, ethnic, uh, heavy bottoms, heavy bottom drums, I think is what the preset's called. Let's check that out just so I'm not a liar. Yep, the heavy bottom ensemble from Master Session Ethnic Drums. Uh, and that's playing along with the Master Session Wood Ensemble, and it's not the clackety woods, it's actually the lower woods. So they're, they're more of like a mid-range sound, whereas the Tyco is this really thick, heavy stuff. And I think I did touch on plug-in use in earlier to our cues, and I'm using a lot this time. I thought it would be kind of fun to add that into the element, so... Let's take a look at what's going on. I um, had some fun and used a lot. Why not shape what we have into some cool-sounding stuff? So there it is. a lot of stuff. So the SPL transient designer basically just pushes the attack. You really hear it like on the first downbeat, there's more of a click to it. And then as the drums play, they're all, this kind of glued together drum, duka duka duh, duka duh, duh. It, you know, you don't get as much of the transient re-attacking. Part of that is how much I'm using. I'm not going crazy with it just to add a little more click to it, so. Just adds a little snap. Um, then what else am I doing? I'm doing a little surgical EQ here. That's a lot of EQ. So here I took out some uh, kind of mud 
it's 175 hertz, it's pretty notchy, so that being pulled out was a little bit of some extra low end I didn't need because there's a lot going on with the other instruments. And then up here, we've got a boost at 3.7K, 3,746 hertz to be exact, which is more the snap of the drum. It really is doing a lot. It really, I think, it, it, it pops out. You can hear it. Okay, so then we've got a compressor. It's just gluing it together a little bit. It's kind of making the package a little tighter and a little squeezed together. Um, it's subtle, it's not a huge thing. And then the last thing is this low ender plugin, which is adding some sub harmonic low stuff. So, you know, that arguably could stare go if I was. Um, you know, a pro mix engineer, I might say to myself, like, hey, you're clouding up the low end with all this extra sub stuff. It's getting in the way of your big kick booms that you have from gravity or, but I didn't care. I just was like, this sounds cool to me and I like it. I'm gonna just go with it. So this is a process. All right, so let's get out of this and listen to what else is going on in this section. The beginning section, there's stuff going on, which is like sweeps and other vibey stuff, which a lot of it is coming from gravity, right? So we've got some hits. I guess that is percussion, but they're more boom hits. Um, all right, so if we solo this. a riser. I made audio. And boom, at 16, we really get into this thing taking off. So I don't want to spend all day going through every single part, but let's just take a look at a few of these. So there's atonal reverses. Let me solve this. It's soloed. It's like, what is that? It's one of those music meets sound design vibey things. Let's go to our gravity contact instance. You're seeing VE Pro, uh, which is housing four different instances of contact. Each one is its own kind of flavor. So we, I have all the gravity instruments in here. And then I did add a synth into the bottom, which we'll cover later. This third one is says drums and percussion, which is what that is. It's cymbals, it's the drum stuff. We got a little damage in there as well. Uh, mostly master sessions, and that's pretty much that. Strings, uh, which we'll get into, which I think is um, mostly from Novo. And then these are the brass parts. There's just three. So back to gravity and what's playing here. That's a cool sound. A tonal reverse. Looks like uh, distorted metal reverses. Let's see what we got here. That is from Disturbing Metals, Reverses. And that is from Disturbing Metal Sweeps, again from Gravity. So that's a good chunk of what makes up the kind of creep factor. Creep factor. <laughs> um, of the beginning. So let me put the whole thing in. We still there's some other stuff we haven't really touched on, but we'll get there. Else is going on sounds like evil is lurking here so 12 horns a 
so those are just, again, they're French horns played really low. We had a lot of them for our Forzo product, so it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty weighty sounding. Cool. And then there's a contrabass, trombones. All right, and so together. There's a little digital delay, a little feeding back kind of ambient vibe. So if we go to our brass mix. See, I have Echo Boy on there. The strings. Well, in Novo, which is our string library, we did an interesting uh, group when we recorded. It was six basses and I think 12 cellos doing kind of like the Brahm thing, where they were doing, it's a portato, I believe that's what it's called similar to Mercado, where it's not super short, ja, 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 or like ja, ja, the longer but forceful notes. So, and hopefully I'm getting that right, the terminology, but this is what those sound like. Yeah, that is satisfying. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on because there's more than just the strings. It's all of these. So I used a lot of plugins. Look, wow, look at that EQ. I'm taking a lot of bottom out, really boosting the top. And then I have a limiter on it, really just bringing up the volume. And squishing them a little bit so they just speak louder. So we have a, a, a very long reverb on here, this altiverb. Right, so you can see that there is a delay send, which you heard, and then this super long reverb, which I'm only using in the intro to make more of a soup. That is some reverb. So you're hearing lots of reverb on those kind of Brahmi strings. And then there's some evil synth going on. Let's check that out. One is coming out of uh, NPO3, which is synth strings. So that's going on along with a Moog. I actually recorded the Moog synth. That one, and then put some distortion on it to make it even angrier. So that mixed with, you know, the strings start to get really aggressive in a cool way. Here we go. I like it. Hopefully you like it too. And these are kind of chugging along the cellos. To give it a little sense of time. And then what else is playing? The drums that we covered already. So you got that in 7-8 again uh, we got brass we've got strings we've got synth uh, we've got all the percussion and now we're going to move into the next section and see what's going on there let's go
So now we hear some excitement really brewing. We have a pretty busy and aggressive line going on with the strings. So let's check that out. Cello. I was trying to remember what I was playing. You get the idea. I'm a guitar player. Give me a break. All right, so here it is, MIDI recorded. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Then we have additional accents there in the bottom, giving it a little more push. All right, next, violas, they join in. Cool, they're just playing the same thing an octave up. A few bars down, we have violins coming in. Why don't we just pick it up in the 4-4 four, four bar right before they come in. Just adding to more of the drama and excitement, like who doesn't like high strings with low strings and mid strings? Violas, violins, cellos. It's a... Uh, Great flavors together. What the heck else is going on here? We have lots of drums, right? We know that. Just play this section. So massive drums and, uh, you know, the synth thing going on at the bottom. Yes, and also the Moog that I recorded from that synth back there is playing similar uh, kind of groany, bottomy, cool stuff. From that point, we dropped a modern synth and go with just the moo because there's so much going on we didn't need it and then uh we have guitars now those are muted and then they come in yeah nice and dirty and sloppy too but they work so if you play those with the drums let's see what that sounds like it's like a metal band after my own heart drums Play them. Yes. And with everything else. They're not super loud. I kind of had them louder and I pulled them in. Um, if you pull them out, you really do notice that they're gone. So, you know, they're adding some of that aggressive dirtiness to it. We do have some symbols going on from damage. I don't think I really looked at those in this previous section, so let's just take a quick look, see what's going on. I think they're just kind of clacking away. Really feel that seven eight. Dun, dun, dun. That's four four in that bar. One two three four five six seven. One two three four five six seven. One two three four five six seven. One two three four. Again. So that was not the greatest counting job, but let's let's take a look one more time. It's really the end of the phrase that makes it work. You have da 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 da. da. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, or one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, one and two and three and four and five and six and seven. It's not easy to count, but you get the vibe. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven, one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, dun, 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 dun. And that bar of four, four, I kind of mixed it up rhythmically where it's not playing all on just one, two, three, four. It's like 
and that's the rhythm. So, and it's following the strings. So, like, let's listen to that in context. The strings are down to down to down to down to down to down. So it's just accenting that along with the drums kind of chugging away. What else is going on here? Some minimal contrabass trombones. The contrabass, you just heard it. It's a little buried, it's under the strings. And I think what happened was I got excited about like, hey, let's add these lower end strings and these lower end synth parts. And like, it just gets lost. It's there, it could be louder, but then you have to make decisions about, do I have too many parts? And what I'm hearing like with this mix now, does it sound good to me? Am I cool with that? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. I just wanted to throw that out there, so. You really don't hear that, it's in there, but you know, you're hearing the real like edgy buzz from the Moog, the Moog. that and the guitars. Yeah. Let's go to the, the pinnacle of the piece where we're at full gas. The pedal is to the floor. That's my favorite part of the piece. So I think the strings are probably the first thing that I wrote. Let's take a listen. And now. So that's the vibe. It's a little atonal, a couple of notes popping out that are like, oh, well, that's funky. Uh, just a choice I went with. I thought it made it sound a little less vanilla. So we throw some horns in, go right to bar 24 where this section starts. So yeah, the, the horn line, the bass motion definitely kind of carves out what the vibe is and the chords are. So like just listening to that, I'm going to pull the horns out. That last pass had the French horns playing a melody. So this is just the contrabass bones with like the bass trombones along with the full complement of um, spiccato or short played strings. <laughs> So that's the progression. Um, if we throw in the low Novo ensemble strings. You immediately feel like this lower support from that stuff. Now, if we take the strings out and we just listen to the supportive kind of lower parts. And there's some kind of cool chordal motion. It's not just one bass note. Um, if we look at that, I think a lot of that's happening in the contrabass trombones. Low 
low and heavy, the low string ensemble is pretty much just playing root stuff. And even here, I believe, is octaves. And you're hearing the plugins on that, which are pretty aggressive. We just listen to the low ensemble strings. Wow, big difference. The vintage tape from Ozone adding a lot of dirt. And uh, we did look at this before, rolling off a lot of low end. It's just, it was too much bottom to work with all the other bottom. There's a lot of bottom in this track. We got a lot of cymbals going on. We got a lot of drums going on, percussion. Let's add in this. I like this part in general, the whole section. I was saying I like this part, like it's my favorite section of the three in this in this piece. What I did was twofold, like the main drums are these heavy bottom drums. They're like Grand Casa, I believe, mixed with um, Tycho, and the Tycho's are a little more prominent. So those, those alone, the Tycho's alone sound like this. pretty steady right a lot of bottom good good kind of tone and flavor to the drums and then if you start adding in these accent drums they really make it pop and this is a high ethnic drum let's just take a look at you know where those came from They're like rapid fire machine gun accents to the chuka duka 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 duka, the real like heavy bottom ensemble drums, you know, with the taiko. And then if we add in the uh, wood ensemble. So it's boom, boom. Boom, boom. So there's like a diddle diddle along with a dung dung and the duka 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 duka. So all three together sounds like a freight train. And then the damage uh, cymbals. Right, so there's kind of uh, the big crashes. And what I think is a ride. Like the ride is, is kind of counting some of the subdivisions, giving you a sense of the time. And there's a lot of crashes going on too, but it's the biggest section, so we need to go big with this. I mean, where are you gonna go? You can't go small, right? So together with those four parts, It's pretty aggressive. I, you know, I made the joke to one of the guys here, and it's almost like Tommy Lee from Motley Crue, if you remember the days, with his double kick bass drums going on and hitting his cymbals. This would be like the orchestra version of that. Kind of funny. Anyway, uh, against the strings. Starts to take shape. You're starting to see, oh, the percussion is running this way, and it's really pushing it forward. These frenetic kind of duka 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 and then the strings are chugging along. If we add in the low um, ensemble doing the bear and it's distorted, it starts to fill in the low end. And at this point, other things are taking over in the low end. Contrabass trombones are playing similar parts. You can 
see right here, we've got some controller data. Oops, let's delete that. Uh, it starts to get, it's loud, and then I kind of swell back into it. Just a, like a little dynamic event to give it a little more um, levity. It's coming in, it's getting louder. It's building, building is the word. That's the one. We have a synth in here. Yep, it's our Moog Sub 37, that thing over there. So if we look again at the Moog, yes, I have uh, a Sound Toys Decapitator. I thought that was appropriate. Given how aggressive the track is, why not use a plugin called Decapitator, right? Adding a decent amount of drive to it. Versus, oh wow, big difference. Yeah, I'm really hitting that thing hard. The drive is almost all the way up. I chose, you know, there's different buttons on this particular plugin for different distortion types. I felt that one was the most kind of cutting. There are effects on there. If we make this a little larger, the mixer, maybe we can read what's going on here. We have a Rocasti reverb and an Echo Boy delay. Just kind of doing its thing. And the Brocasti is a hardware unit, and this is the controller interface for the Brocasti. So I have a hall. And there's the delay. Let's see what are the elements that are making this thing hit. We get some gravity hits. And again, it's hard to really hear them in the mix, but they are doing a critical job. Booms. Da boom. Right? Hitting along with the drums. Let's see what they do. I think they add some serious air moving low end. Yes. And again, we're bringing back this disturbing metal sweep. That is a lot of bottom. It's good. I like it. And then again, Moog guitars. So that's the kind of, that's the band, so to speak, you know, the drums and the low end and the kind of chordal progression. And then on top, the thing that's really carrying that, and it's, it's not like it's super loud, but it's in there, are the French horns. If you look at those. So that's happening, and if we listen to that against the string lines, it'll give us a better sense of, like, well, what does this sound like if you were to play it on, like, a piano? Here's your melody, here's your midsection, your low. So it's Forza, which is our horn library. And again, you can use your own horn library. I've said this before in other two hour cues. This is not about like using heaviosity stuff. It's about like, how do you write a track? 
me writing a track and dismantling it, showing you the parts and how they kind of intertwine and work. So again, um, I happen to use our stuff because it's our stuff and why not? So if we add in the contra trombones, the contra bass trombones here, you'll get a better sense of the chord motion because the strings are kind of covering the mids at this point. We have the 12 horns playing the melody line then you get then you have the contrabass playing the lower section and it's augmented by the string brahms and you know the synth part So if we add in the Novo Ensemble, I don't know if I've shown you that. Let's just take a look at it. Low Ensemble, here it is from Novo. And in this section, that sounds like this. So I have some nice uh, plugins making it crunchy. And then the drums are kind of doing their thing. And on the bottom, we have the synth, which we've covered a bit, but just to see what's going on there one more time. Pretty heavy. Go heavier. Go home. Now, if we hear the whole section. Kind of just goes out on the heavy Brahms, which is the Moog. And we also have this synth line from our modern synth strings. There's only one section where it kind of joins the Moog here and bends down. With a lot of effects on it. That's a neat sound. And then add it to the Moog synth. And then you add in a couple more layers of goodness on that. Just some gravity hits, uh, some distorted metal reverses. And she's out. Cool, so I'll play this thing from the top and I'll flip through some of the presets so you can see and have a final look. Let's do it.
Thanks for tuning in when watching episode four of Two Hour Cues. Hope you enjoyed this pretty aggressive track. Lots of layers going on, lots of stuff going on. If you guys have any comments, questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer questions. We're doing this stuff for you guys, and if you enjoy it, then we want to do more. If you have any ideas for future shows or topics or stuff you want me to cover, uh, I'd be happy to explore that, so leave that stuff in the comments as well. That concludes episode four of Two Hour Cues, and thanks for watching.